All right, let's keep it light and tight. This is America. We don't have presidents who punish companies because they don't flatter them enough. There's nothing great again about taking America down the path of the despot. We've never had a president call for Americans to boycott a company he doesn't like. Look at this. Can't say that anymore. I believe that if people stopped using or subscribing, two Ps and stop, to AT&T, they would be forced to make big changes at CNN, which is dying in the ratings anyway. It's so unfair with such bad fake news. Why wouldn't they act? When the world watches CNN, it gets a false picture of USA. Sad. Now, first of all, AT&T employs 268,000 people, including your boy here. But does the president really want people to lose jobs so that CNN won't cover his lies as often? Yes, is the answer. Now, his friend just told us, oh, he's just playing with you. Don't let him live rent-free in your head. That's not right. He tried to kill the merger of AT&T and CNN's parent company, even though he knew they didn't have a case. He was told that. He wasted your money on frivolous litigation. He reportedly told one of his advisors to have the DOJ kill the deal before that. He failed. But it shows he would use his power to punish. And the thousands of families that depend on us, he would do that just out of personal spite. Remember, this isn't about national security. It's not about the company doing something horrible to workers or making people sick. Yes, they own CNN. That's not my point. You know me better than that by now. The point is this president doesn't like our coverage. And as for his suggestion that he only cares about this because it hurts the United States image abroad, the false picture of the U.S., look at Pew's research about how others in the world see this man who's being protested in the U.K. right now while he's at his fancy dinner. Embarrassed this country on the world stage, he actually threw his own intel agencies under the bus and took the word of Putin, the man responsible for interference, about the interference. I was there. It was embarrassing. Abroad, just like at home, people are worried about his behavior and ability to lead. And once again, in this latest attack at a free press, he is fueling his fire with farce. Look, if he wants to blame the free press for what he said about Meghan Markle, fine. But he said it. He used the word nasty about her and what she said. There's tape of him. Period. He can say the Navy story is fake, but he's calling the Navy fake because they confirmed on the record that the White House asked them to mess with the USS John McCain. Not fake, fact. This president doesn't have to like it. Hell, no president likes the media if it's doing his job right, right? We work for you, not for them. But when will this president learn how to use his power to be responsible and bring people together? Look, I'm not a fan of royalty, okay? I'm an American. This country was formed in opposition to the idea of royalty. But there is a clear argument that our president could really learn something from the Brits he seems so enamored with. The irony is lost on no one, and he probably just likes being treated like a king, but he should observe the reserve. The thought about what to say and not say. It's called discretion. And the idea of putting your duty to others before your own interests. I never thought I would argue this, but we might be in a better place in this country right now if our president were more like the queen. If only in a, that she is focused on saying only what she must, staying on message, providing a message that puts unity first regardless of her personal stake. Now that is something worthy of repeating.